a little bit about what we'll look at today. There is a collaborative notes document, and you don't have to worry about trying to snap a picture of that right away. I'll have a slide in a second that has a link, as well as that bar, um, that QR code again. But I'll invite you to participate and share your thoughts and ideas with each other and with me throughout the session. You'll have an opportunity to do so. We'll talk about what instructor presence is, whether it's different online than in person, or maybe it's not that uh, How students perceive our presence and where and what we can do to, to help make our presence felt and seen in the course. And we'll talk about what some options and technologies are, uh, specifically in Brightspace. How many of you in here teach currently or have taught online? Almost every year. How many of you here work in some aspect in something like IT or Center for Teaching and Learning or something where you're doing faculty training and support? About three quarters of the hands. Okay, so a lot of you, like me, wear multiple hats. And a lot of you, like me, probably have a lot of ideas about instructor presence and a lot of things you have discovered and encountered along your professional journey. So looking forward to hearing from you. Some opening thoughts, and then I will get to the slide that gives you the link in the QR code for the collaborative shared notes, which you're welcome to make a copy of, etc. A supportive, engaging online learning experience includes active instructor presence, but what does that mean, and how do we achieve that? How do we construct a course with intentional presence, and how do we remain present, or remain to seem to remain present, without burning out or needing to be constantly, every day, all day, online. But is there a risk of over-automating? Do students notice when their presence is automated? And if we're over-eager to automate our presence so that we're not logging in frequently, does that mean that we're not engaged in our course? There, there are a lot of questions that come to mind about this subject when I start thinking about it. Okay, the collaborative notes are entirely optional, so if you're thinking, gosh, I'm already tired today, I'm full of breakfast, I just want to sit here and not have to type anything on my phone, that's cool. But the collaborative notes will give you the opportunity to share ideas, so we'll stop at certain points, I'll give you the chance to share your thoughts. If the QR code isn't working for you, there's the short URL. I'm really surprised nobody claimed this tiny URL already. I, like, wow, D2L-Fusion. So there's a tiny URL if the QR code is not working for you. I'll leave that up just a moment longer. If it's working for you, can you give me like a, yay, okay, good. And I'm just going to minimize this for a quick sec. We'll pop right back to it, but I'll show you. This is the collaborative notes document that I'm saying so much about over and over. You don't have to wait until I'm giving you a cue to, to pop in your ideas in any of these areas. You can look ahead if you want to. I see a lot of people in it, yay. Yet, by the way, have my presentation materials in the Fusion portal. Uh, that's not because I'm stingy with them. I want you to have all the materials, the slide deck, etc. I just need to get a few things figured out because our university was recently much 
target of a cyber incident. And so I've been kind of locked out of the world and locked in there anyway. So I haven't yet figured out how to get into my speaker portal because I think that email went missing. Speaking of weird things like that, here's a question I ask myself a lot. And it pertains directly to the concept of instructor presence. And at the bottom it shows there where the quote is from, though I think it's you know, something that a lot of people say a lot of times. But Grey's Anatomy is my comfort show, weirdly. Hospital shows are my comfort shows. Something about seeing people on the worst day of their life just Makes me feel better for mine, somehow. But I ask myself this a lot. Do you know who you are? Do you know what's happened to you? And if you know these things, then... You can, you can share this. You can share more of yourself with your learners, with others. Oh, a few moments ago, a few minutes ago, I showed you a slide that just had my credentials on it. That didn't really tell you much about me, who I am, or what's happened to me. That tells you what I do to it. But when we bring our experiences, the, the things that we've learned, the, even our traumas, when that informs what we're bringing into our classes, then there's more of our presence there. If you want to take a moment, I'm curious to know, and I'll talk about my, my thoughts on this too, I'm curious to know your thoughts about what instructor presence is, especially in an online environment. So Doug says, providing tangible value to students by making your voice and value add visible throughout a course, both through presenting materials and interactions, making connections with students, being visually active and engaged for your students, making students feel like you're in it with them, making sure students feel supported in their learning through specific visible actions, Timely feedback. Feedback is huge for presence. Being human, vulnerable. Anonymous Moose is typing that, but thank you, whoever you are, Anonymous Moose. And while folks are still sharing ideas, I'll share with you something, a discussion I had with a colleague not long ago about instructor presence, and I was holding forth about all the different tools that you can use for instructor presence in D2O. You know, release conditions, and intelligent agents, and news, and schedule your news, and I was going on and on. And he said, but all of that, if you wait until that point, when you're facilitating a class, when you're teaching a class, to build your presence, it's too late that your presence needs to be there in the content of the course, your experience, your insight, your expertise, your unique anecdotes. Developing relationships with students, I'm looking back at what some of you are sharing, being present and understanding where students are, being accessible through constant communication. Part of instructor presence is, or effective instructor presence is, it needs to be built in. It's not something, oh, 
that only happens when you're facilitating a course. Your presence starts with your content, your voice, your unique perspective, your expertise. It needs to be current. Reusing materials can save a lot of time. We all do it. We should do it. I mean, we don't want to rebuild every time. There's no need. But if your content starts to look stale, if your content has a lot of old dates, old information in it, if your content has other people's names in it, if your announcements are referring to prior semesters, then that doesn't look current, and it looks as if you're kind of, you've forgotten about being present in your course. Students notice it. It needs to be sustainable, in fact, of instructor presence. Make it something sustainable for you. So things like, you know, synchronous discussions via Zoom are a great way to be present. Your students see you, hear you, you interact with them in real time. But planning to do that every week may be not sustainable for you. So thinking of ways that are sustainable for you, maintainable for you. And then presence you know, needs to be engaging. And that means it doesn't necessarily mean you have to respond to everything for every student all the time. For example, with discussions, you know, ordinary discussion boards, discussion topics. It might not be sustainable, maintainable to respond to everything as every student posts, and you may not need to. Sometimes being too present can bring the discussion to a halt. begins with your content before your students are ever enrolled, building your content. This is sometimes easier said than done, as more and more often we're presented with content that may already be built, certain components of course content that is unified across a particular department or program that can't be changed, content that was built by someone else. I don't know about any of you, but at the university where I work, sometimes things go awry and adjuncts are hired at the last minute. Sometimes the first day, sometimes the first week of classes, adjuncts are being brought in, and they don't have time to rebuild content from scratch, and they're not asked to, they're not supposed to. They're taking what's built and running with it. But even then, there's opportunity in ways to bring your own voice in, for, for them to bring their voice in. So in as much as you can, find ways to build your voice in, and not just your spoken voice, but your, your written voice, your expertise and insight. I emphasize written content a lot, and a little bit of that is because my background is in English, but also it's easier to update written content than video content. Though sometimes, when you're presented with a pre-built course that's already loaded down with content that maybe cannot be changed or should not be changed, bringing in your own video content is a great way to bring in your voice. Because that's something you can create, put on YouTube or wherever it is that, that your faculty put things. Another question, is instructor presence actually different online than in person? Is it different? How is it different? Is it different? I think I just said, is it different twice? says, I think maybe a better question is how is instructor presence different in an asynchronous versus a synchronous learning environment? That's a good, good point. I think the key is intentionality. One must be more intentional in building presence in async. Well, it's more natural in synchronous. Doug, where are you? Thank you. Online, it can be partially automated, yes. 
And the whole discussion of automation of things online is changing daily with AI and ChatGPT and all of that, which I'm not touching today. Because by the end of the day, it will be different. Bringing humor can be, yeah, bringing in humor can be more challenging for sure. And I'm a funny person, and you don't necessarily see that this morning, because in my last few days have been a rolling amount of stress. But I'm a funny person. I'm someone who, you know, I'm also usually energetic. I'm at a dance, I'm the first person on the dance floor and the last person to leave. And if any of you in here have seen me at a fusion before, you may remember that. Because I will be the person who's stone cold sober up there dancing by myself as soon as they start the music. I realize now that I've just like set a challenge for myself because I think there's music tonight. Okay. But it's hard to get, it's harder sometimes to get your personality across online. And also there are, there's more to think about there because sometimes, sometimes jokes in text don't really translate well. Sometimes they don't translate well even when they say. obvious and natural in any format. I remember a long time ago, I took a philosophy class. It was a sophomore level philosophy class. It was a really interesting subject. I was at a very small university, public university, and there was one professor who taught philosophy, so him or, or nothing, and I really wanted the class. But he had these yellow notes. He was brilliant. He was so at, at, at what he knew. He knew so much. He was really engaging if he could talk to it person to person. But he got up in front of the room with these yellow, kind of crispy, crinkly notes. And I don't, I still to this day, I don't know how he did it, but he was like, he was like looking into the distance and holding the notes and turning them at exactly the right time. Crinkle, 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 crinkle. He was there, but he wasn't really present, or it didn't feel that he was. I'm still glad I took him. But, yeah, presence isn't always easy or obvious, no matter what the modality is. So online, where do students perceive our presence in a course? Announcements, discussions, one-on-one, -on -one, personalized primary materials, personalized feedback. Feedback's huge. Office hours, absolutely. Speaking in first person, keeping it conversational. Paige, where are you? Thank you, Paige. Yes, I agree. Keeping it conversational. Keeping it first person. You sound then like a person. You are talking to them like a person. Even in written materials. Instructor introduction page, course announcements, moderating discussions, absolutely. Oops. Presence doesn't have to equal time. We don't have to be present in the course all day long online in order to seem present if we're present in our content, if we've scheduled news, say, that appears at different times. Presence doesn't have to equal time spent. Instead of flipping back to the notes for this one, um, 
What are some of our tools in Brightspace for building presence? Shout out. Intelligent agents. Video, I love video notes. Video notes rule. I love video notes. Now, I am someone who makes a lot of instructional videos, and so I have gotten very, very used to the sound of my voice recording. My voice is what it is. And so I don't have that moment of angst when I hear myself playing back. And I've gotten used to what I look like in the mirror. You know, I, I look like what I look like and I send like what I send like. And so video notes, I love them um, because it's such a quick and easy way to communicate. I don't have to use an additional piece of software, upload something, etc. And they're accessible <clears throat> because you can set it to do a Closed captions, thank you. But yeah, your content, audio and video recordings, including video notes, email, including intelligent agents, news and announcements, release conditions, various kinds of discussions, grades, and feedback. The beating heart of your course is your content. That's where they find you 24-7. It's always there. <clears throat> Even if you're working with something pre-built, looking for ways to make it your own in as much as you can is useful. Now, if you're locked into something where you can't change the content, again, maybe videos that you can link students to on YouTube, using announcements and news more, more frequently and so on, talking with them in discussions, talking with them in video conferences and office hours, talking with them in feedback. I use videos and audio notes a lot in feedback. So they hear me and they, they see me. Well, not a lot with my actual face in feedback, but I do a lot of screencasting. That is not me, so we're good. <laughs> Multimedia content is another way to bring your voice and your face into your online course and be there for your students. It can be, can be used in a lot of different places within a course and a lot of different tools. And again, the video note tool is great for this. Email we take as a given, though I no longer do after, anyway. Has anyone else in the room besides my colleague to my right ever been in an institution that's dealt with a cyber incident? Oh, thank goodness. Okay. I feel so much less alone now. You know my trauma. Intelligent agents combined with email are a really powerful tool for instructor presence because you can set them to be triggered by a variety of conditions. Sometimes we think of them or we talk about them as a means to check for whether students are logging in and to send them little reminders, but it's useful for a lot more than that. You can use intelligent agents for positive reinforcement. You can use intelligent agents for, you can have them triggered by all sorts of different release conditions. And you can use, you can set them up so that they address students by name if you want to. So they can seem very personalized, but there's something that you can set up in advance and reuse. Announcements and news, we've talked about. But that's a great way to achieve presence in your course. Even if your content is already kind of locked into place, through news, you can be there in front of your students. This is, you know, news is where you are in front of them, in front of the class, essentially. 
and you can pre-schedule them. I have these little Monday coffee talk announcements that I have scheduled to appear on, on Mondays at a certain time. Okay. Uh, what questions? And that's an excellent point. And I've heard faculty of, at, at my university say this. I've heard faculty elsewhere say this. And it's something I've started thinking about more over time. Because we see, or I see, I don't know about you, more and more people using scheduled announcements. And I've actually overheard students before say, you know, all my teachers schedule announcements. You can tell when they're scheduled in advance. And so it has me sometimes thinking about my little Monday coffee talks and thinking, okay, they know what's up. Because they probably have other instructors who are doing something similar. So yeah, responding to things that are going on currently, um, you know, having news that isn't just scheduled, having news that isn't so formal or perfect. That does a lot to build instructor presence. Achieving this balance between, between automation and, and personalization is, is, a, is an interesting thing. So again, thank you for making that point. I think that's really important. Discussion hmm. with Zoom or any other video tool, it's a great way to be there and engage with your students. It's not always feasible or sustainable, depending. You know, if, if you're teaching something that's really fully online that, that doesn't necessarily need to have synchronous, you know, video-based meetings, students may not be particularly prepared for finding time for that in their schedule. You may not have a lot of, I see, and in fact. Yeah, it's all this video point. Yes. Uh, I teach a course that has 450 students in it. Ooh. And it's one of the benefits of asynchronicity, right? In a higher education environment, they just pile them in. So, yeah, higher education, yeah. And so, specifically around assessment, I have TAs. So there's all, it's all well and good for me to be me in the course and in my content, but it's always very high stakes assessment, and it's not always me. Do you have any experience working with training TAs or looking at, like, it doesn't even work when I make little guides for them, you know, like here's how you could maybe respond to a student or here's how you could maybe interact with them. They're gonna be them. So in an environment with multiple quote unquote instructors, especially at those assessment points, I don't know if you have any insights around consistency of instructor presence when you're not the only instructor in the room. That is a brilliant question. I'm really glad you asked that. At the university where I work currently, do we even have any classes that are that big at this point? Okay, now I got my master's degree at Texas A&M where there were sections like that. I didn't personally teach them, but I, I knew people who did and who did kind of struggle with, with the question of multiple TAs and how to have consistency of presence. I'm gonna throw your brilliant question to the room though. Is there anyone else here who has experience or insight with that who would like to address your question.
So standardized rubrics, having clear grading criteria and you know, great expectations for each question. And true, rubrics can have a lot of your voice in it if, if you spend time up front developing them. And there's always a risk of putting too much in a rubric and I think sometimes I have crossed that line because I will get really verbose in a, in a rubric. Possibly offering students more than they will read. But, the, but I think that is um, one piece of, of low-hanging fruit there that, that could be useful. You may already use rubrics and be thinking, eh, I'm looking for a different solution. I appreciate the question. I appreciate your input. I know we're running close to the end of our time, and I do want to give more time for questions, and yes. Really, just going to kind of click through to the end, and yeah, oh, uh, go for it. So I think the biggest concern that I would have with trying to use video for a large class or something like that is uh, the ability to review the TA grading before it's pushed out, or at least the challenge in doing that. Uh, generally speaking, with large So you're adding a layer of feedback on top of what the TA is, is offering. Excellent points, and yeah, the instructor presence is only you know part of the success of an online course. Creating those opportunities, fostering those intentional means for students to be present and engaged is, is super important as well. And yeah, with non-traditional students, um, we have a lot of rural students in at, enrolled at our university who have you know, limited amounts, limited quality of internet access, even so. Things get challenging. Some of them, you know, are in a location where they can do their coursework certain days of the week. Uh, Saturday or Sunday, they're not doing anything because their internet just isn't up for it. So those are that's useful that they do it as well. And you're right about video notes. That's accessible to students. They can do video responses right in front of I do see people starting to get up, which suggests that we are at time. Among other things.
thing that I didn't wear a watch today, so I'm guessing at the time. I, I, thank you for laughing. Thank you. <laughs> because it is funny. Okay. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for sharing your thoughts. You know, those of you who, who asked questions and shared ideas and who shared things in the, the shared notes too. Thank you so much. And I'll, I'll see you around.